This is a short video tutorial on Adobe Illustrator. In this video, I will show you how to make colorful circles like this, in Adobe Illustrator. Without further ado, let's get started. Open a new document in Adobe Illustrator. As usual, set the color mode to RGB. First of all, create a background using the rectangle tool, and follow the size of the artboard. Give it a solid black color. Open the layer panel, and lock layer 1, where the rectangle that we have created is located. Give it name, background. Then create a new layer for the next step. Also name it, circle. Now, create a circle using the ellipse tool. Click anywhere in the artboard to open the ellipse panel. Set the width and height to 400 pixel. Change the stroke weight to 0.5 point. Set the fill to none. And for the stroke, we give it a gradient color. Open the gradient panel in the window menu. On the gradient annotator, change the colors of these two color stops to light gray. And make another color stop in the middle with location of 80% with a darker gray color. And for the midpoint on the left, change its position to 20%. And the other one to 80%. Finally, change the angle to 45 degrees. Now we're going to duplicate it to form a spirograph by using transform. Go to the effect menu. Distort and transform. And click transform. On the transform effect panel, put a check mark on the preview, so we can see the changes in real time. Leave the horizontal and vertical scale at 100%. For the horizontal move, change it to 17 pixels, and the vertical move to 9 pixels. For the rotation angle, fill with 14 degrees. Copies becomes 179. For the options, just leave it like that. You can also experiment with these numbers to get different results, you don't have to make the same as I did here. And when it's finished click OK. And the circle we made earlier now turns into a spirograph form. At first glance, this looks like a three-dimensional donut, that's because we gave the previous base circle a gradient color to the stroke. Because if we just give the circle a flat white color, the result will look less dimensionless. Now we just need to give it a colorful gradient. For the gradient color that we will give to the spirograph, it is not enough to directly color it. Keep in mind, that this is just a line that is duplicated using a transform, so it's not a complete object that we can color it directly. After all we've given the stroke a black and white gradient. I have tried other ways, by expanding it and making it an object path, and giving it the freedom gradient, but this method makes my PC work very slowly, and the resulting color also looks less bright. So I tried another way, namely by using the mesh tool. Previously I have prepared some colors here. You can copy the hex color code in the description. Make a rectangle following the size of the artboard. For now, color it with red. Open the transparency panel, or you can find it in the window menu and search for transparency. Change the blending mode from normal to color. This color blending mode creates a result color with the luminance of the base color, and the hue and saturation of the blend color. This preserves the gray levels in the image and is useful for coloring monochrome images, and for tinting color images. That's the reason why I've grayed out this basic circle. Because if we use white or black color, the blend color has no effect on the result color. You can see what happens if we lift the rectangle out of this spirograph. We can see here, which is affected by the red color only the spirograph lines are gray. And the black background is not affected at all. For this reason I chose color blending mode. For now, the results we get look perfect. We just need to give it a few more colors to make it look more perfect. Select this red rectangle. Then activate the mesh tool on the toolbar. Make meshes like this. Two horizontal lines and two vertical lines, you can make three or more if you want multiple colors. The intersections of these lines are also called anchor points. You can select it using the direct selection tool. And the anchor point is also where we can place the colors we want. Next, 
select one anchor point using the Direct Selection tool. After one of the anchor points has been selected, then activate the Eyedropper tool to select an available color. Or, without using the Eyedropper tool, you can simply select an existing color in the swatches panel. Ok, back to the Eyedropper tool. We just have to choose one of the existing colors. Then we just need to do the same with the other three anchor points. But you no longer need to reactivate the Direct Selection tool to select an anchor point while the Eyedropper tool is active. You can use the Direct Selection tool function without having to activate it on the toolbar just by pressing the Control key on the keyboard. And if you pay attention to my toolbar, my eyedropper tool is active. This can be seen with a black box on the eyedropper tool, and my cursor icon is in the form of an eyedropper. By pressing the control key, my cursor icon changes to the direct selection tool icon, but the eyedropper tool on the toolbar is still active. This way you don't have to waste time switching tools back and forth. You only need to press the control key. Let me show you. Press control key and hold. Select an anchor point. Release control key and pick a color. Repeat the steps. Press control and and hold. Select an anchor point. Release control key and pick a color. It's just that simple, but it can save you a lot of time if you work with lots of objects. Now we're done coloring this circle. But if you are still not satisfied with the color arrangement, you can edit each anchor point to adjust the position of each anchor point. Besides that you can still add a few more meshes to add color to the circle. And we're done creating this colorful spirograph. If you have questions about this video or this artwork, Please write in the comments, I really appreciate it. Thank you for watching this video, don't forget to subscribe, like and share. And turn on notification bells for upcoming videos. See you in the next video.